Hello, I'm Keith Barton, and in this video I will go through step by step some of the nuances of the pressure flow microshunt implantation technique. The pressure flow microshunt is a fine polymer tube that drains aqueous from the anterior chamber to the subtenone space. The conjunctival and tenos dissection are very similar to those of a trabeculectomy. But unlike a trabeculectomy, do not need to be at 12 o'clock because the pressure flow microshunt drains more posteriorly. Lid coverage is therefore easier to achieve and the potential for bleb dysesthesia is less. I prefer a slightly temporal pruritomy, as bleb problems after trabeculectomy are more common with nasal positioning. Mitomycin C is essential to prevent fibrosis, but good hemostasis is also essential so that blood cannot negate the effect of the mitomycin C. A large pyritomy facilitates posterior placement of the three LASIK sponges soaked in mitomycin. After three minutes, the sponges are removed and the area irrigated copiously. Reaching underneath the conjunctiva to tent up the tenons also facilitates sponge removal, as sometimes they may get stuck uh, deep behind tenons. The large pyritomy will also be beneficial later during closure of tenons. After light scleral cautery and drying of the area, a mark is made 3 mm behind the limbus. The anterior mark should be made close to the posterior edge of the corneal scleral transition zone. This mark is too anterior. This mark is at the posterior limbus, which is correct. This mark is a little anterior, but is satisfactory. A one millimeter wide slit keratome pocket is made as far as the edge of the corneal scleral transition zone. Just posterior to the mark. The anterior chamber is entered with a 25 gauge needle, which usually must be bent to achieve the correct angle. The needle is introduced the length of the pocket and tilted forward to enter just anterior to the iris. Avoid distorting the tissues during entry or the pressure flow microshunt may finish up closer to cornea than ideal. A single clean entry and exit without distortion is a critical determinant of the final position. Carefully to remove the microshunt from its packaging over the eye as it is easily flicked out of the field. The pressure flow microshunt is carefully fed, bevel up, through the pocket and into the anterior chamber. The fins are slightly wider than the scleral pocket to ensure the pressure flow microshunt self-retains. Nevertheless, it is important to ensure that the pressure flow microshunt is correctly seated. Difficulty inserting the microshunt may occur if the anterior chamber is over or underinflated, or if the scleral pocket apex is situated more anteriorly than the anterior chamber needle entry point. As the pressure flow microshunt is hydrophobic, it often requires some encouragement, such as scleral pressure, in order to drain. If flow is not visualised during surgery, the pressure flow microshunt will not lower IOP. Sometimes flow cannot be elicited with external pressure alone. Ensure the eye is firm by injecting BSS via paracentesis, or here via the implantation tunnel. If there's still no flow, then flush the pressure flow with BSS. The microshunt can be flushed easily with a thin-walled 23-gauge cannula.
In this case, flow is then easily visualized with fluorescein. When flushing, ensure the cannula is snug against the fins of the microshunt inside the pocket entrance. If at first you don't succeed, then flush forcefully again. If a thin-walled 23-gauge cannula is not available, don't panic. A regular 21-gauge can be used instead. Take care when closing not to block the pressure flow with tenons. A large peritomy permits visualization of the position of tenons relative to the micro shunt while closing. I use two tenon nylon sutures, which are less inflammatory than Vicryl but may require removal after a couple of weeks. If the tenons is tight, suture in two layers, recessing tenons slightly. Eight days after surgery, the bleb is still red, but diffuse and the pressure is good. Five months after surgery, the bleb is quiet and diffuse. Pressure flow microshunt blebs are often posterior and diffuse, reducing the potential risk of discomfort and infection. I hope you find this video helpful and thank you for watching.